In March 2025, the programming world went mad with a disease called the vibe coding mind virus. For those who have not yet been infected, vibe coding is a term coined by ex OpenAI wizard Andre Kaparthi, where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. This term has taken the world by storm, and virtually every code influencer on the internet right now is following in the footsteps of Apex indie hacker Peter Levels, who recently vibe coded a crappy real time flight simulator MMO with JavaScript. Then he leveraged his large Twitter following to sell in-game advertisements and make a ton of money. You gotta respect the pure tech bro genius here, but the problem is that now everybody is vibe coding crappy games and flooding the internet with more and more AI-generated slop. But according to the CEO of Anthropic, this is the way. He recently stated that in just 12 months, virtually all code will be written by AI. And in today's video, we'll look at real-life examples of when vibe coding goes wrong and check out some awesome tools and techniques to help you vibe properly. It is March 26, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. The first thing you need to realize is that coding and programming are not the same. Coding is the skill of translating logic into instructions for a computer by writing code. An elite coder might be able to bang out 100 words per minute of perfect C code in Vim purely from memorized syntax, but large language models are making this skill obsolete. An 8-year-old prompter can now write code faster than a skilled professional with 20 years of experience. But programming is a far broader skill that's hard to describe. It's both an art and a science that requires ingenuity, creativity, and good instincts gained through experience. The best programmers often spend more time removing code than writing code. And if you don't understand the code you're vibing out like a true programmer, you won't get very far. Like this poor guy on the internet vibe coded a SaaS product and even had paying customers, which is a huge achievement for an indie hacker. Upon learning about his success, the trolls of the internet came out and hacked it to pieces. Quote, random thing are happening. Maxed out usage on API keys. People bypassing the subscription. Creating random shit on DB. This is taking me longer than usual to figure out. Ultimately, the app was taken down permanently. And and the guy had to beg for his job back at Popeyes. Sadly, there are many such cases, but when done properly, vibe coding can work. And I think it's only a matter of time before we see a billion dollar business that runs entirely on vibes, which will likely be built with tools like V0 or Bolt, along with AI IDEs like Cursor and Windsurf. But if you choose to vibe max your code with tools like these, I would highly recommend following these three rules. Rule number one, choose a popular, simple tech stack. Something like React, Express, Tailwind, Redis, and Dino should be ideal for web dev. The reality is that these LLMs are best at solving problems that people have already solved on places like GitHub, Stack Overflow, etc. And that means even though you hate React, trying to use that fancy new JavaScript framework is going to kill your vibes. Actually, screw that, my preferred choice is Svelte, but I've actually been getting really good vibe coding results with Vue.js and Nuxt. So this rule is breakable. Rule number two, though, is not breakable, and that is to get good at Git. When AI takes control of your code, that means it also has the power to delete your working code. And when that happens, it's almost impossible to prompt it back into existence. However, if you're disciplined and use version control, you would have stashed that good working code somewhere safe. In fact, you can use tools like Claude Code to vibe commit your code for you, or check out my full Git course if you want to learn it by hand. But the most important rule is rule number three. Ask not what your AI can do for you, but what can you do for your AI. You're not a coder anymore, you're a product manager. And if you want to be a good one, you need to break down complex requirements into small steps. They should be highly specific and also provide the proper context to solve the problem, like recent documentation and images for UI design. It might sound like a vibe killer, but you don't want your LLM to get creative. You want it to be as deterministic as possible. As a developer who's highly skilled in building failed side projects, I've never felt more powerful. That being said, I think relying on vibe only is still a bad idea. Like the Levels Flight Simulator had all kinds of issues, and it likely would have failed miserably if it weren't for the developer's many years of experience as a foundation. But now that you know how to vibe code like a true professional, you also need to know how to write like a true professional. And the best tool to get you there is Grammarly, the sponsor of today's video. It's an AI writing partner that helps professionals get their work done faster while improving quality. And unlike other AI tools, it works directly with all the communication apps you already use, making it a much more seamless experience. Like, whenever there's a text box, Grammarly automatically provides one-click suggestions and rewrites it to speed up your writing process, without the need to copy and paste from an AI chatbot. It's perfect for polishing emails, writing pull request descriptions, or replying to ridiculously long Slack messages from your boss, while making sure that you always sound like yourself and not a soulless robot. And its high-quality suggestions do a great job of matching the tone to the audience you're writing for. Sign up and download Grammarly for free today using the link below. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.